Hello everybody, this is David. Welcome back to my channel. Well, this video is a continuation of our series, Seven Reasons Why I Believe. And we're in the subset, Seven Reasons Why I Believe in the Atoning Blood of Jesus Christ. And we're at reason number six. And the sixth reason why I believe in the Atoning Blood is that the Atoning Blood lies at the heart of the Church's memory of her Lord. Now, as we read in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23 to 26, where we read, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had drunk, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So one reason why the Lord's Supper was instituted the Lord, by the Lord's Supper we mean the breaking of the bread or the communion or the fellowship meal. One reason why the Lord's Supper was instituted was to stir the church's memory in order that Calvary, in all its solemn significance, might be unforgettable. This do in remembrance of me, as the Lord Jesus said. Now, as, as the church participates in this act of remembrance, she also proclaims the act of redemption. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So in the broken bread, we have the emblem of the broken body. That breaking was to lead to the bleeding. In the poured out wine, we have an emblem of the poured out blood resulting from the breaking of Christ's body on the cross. In the cup, we have an emblem of the everlasting covenant. For as the cup holds the wine, so the covenant holds out to us all the merits of the precious blood of Christ. The blood of the eternal Christ is the blood of the everlasting covenant. So Christ could say, this cup is the New Testament or the New Covenant in my blood. So the covenant is a covenant in blood. In the blood, the, the covenant blessings are secured and sealed to the covenant people. That's you and I, if we're believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hence, the breaking was to lead to the bleeding and the bleeding was to lead to the blessing. Therefore, Paul could say in uh, the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 16. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? Now, the whole centre of the supper is signified in the blood. The broken bread speaks of the body of Christ stained with the blood. The broken, blood, the broken body was the bleeding body. The wine speaks of the body of Christ drained of every life drop of blood. The cup speaks of the blood preserved for the benefit of the believing soul. So the Lord's sacrifice was a crimson sacrifice and the Lord's supper is a crimson supper. The Lord's death was dominated by the blood and the supper is dominated by that which signifies the blood, that is the wine. So the shorter catechism in answer to the question, what is the Lord's Supper? It states, and I quote, the Lord's Supper is a sacrament wherein by giving and receiving bread and wine, according to Christ's appointment, his death is showed forth. And the worthy receivers are not after a corporal and carnal manner, but by faith made partakers of his body and blood 
with all his benefits to their spiritual spiritual nourishment and growth in grace. End of quote. So the catechism guards against two errors regarding the ordinance. Firstly, Rome teaches the transubstantiation of the elements into the actual body and blood of Christ. And Luther taught the reception of Christ's real body and blood along with the elements. This is called consub consubstantiation, signifying that the body and blood of Christ is in, with and under the element, substance of the elements. Now, the biblical view, the scriptural view, is that the soul alone, that's you and I, at the supper partakes by faith of the body and blood of Christ. The believing communicant takes by faith the benefits of the blood and by the act of partaking physically of the bread and wine, he proclaims the Lord's death to, to, to our soul, our conscience and our heart. There is no transubstantiation here or consubstantiation here, but it's an appropriation, not in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense only, of the benefits of the blood shed and sprinkled on our behalf. Now, this appropriation by faith is not only confined to the Lord's Supper, it takes place whenever faith in Christ is exercised. So, in this spiritual sense, we can sing as we approach the, the Lord's table. There's, there's a lovely hymn here which we can sing and the hymn writer says here that is at the, at the supper at the table here O oh my Lord I see thee face to face here would I touch and handle things unseen here grasp with firmer hand the eternal grace and all my weariness upon thee lean here would I feed upon the bread of God. Here drink with thee the royal wine of heaven. Here would I lay aside each earthly load. Here taste afresh the calm of sin forgiven. Praise the Lord. Mine is the sin, but thine is the righteousness. Mine is the guilt, but thine the cleansing blood. Here is my robe, my refuge and my peace, thy blood, thy righteousness, O Lord my God. Let me thank God for the old hymn writers. So to reject the blood is to destroy the meaning of the sacrament. Hence, I believe in the atoning blood of Christ, because that blood lies at the heart of the church's memory of her Lord. So I want to thank you for joining me in this video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.